What up, Shredder? I've been around the snowboard world since 1997. Growing up, I binge-watched snowboard videos for years. I quit normal life and I moved to the mountains in Colorado. I dedicated every single waking hour to the art of surfing the mountain with a board strapped to my feet for over 10 years. I've won national championships. I've had pow days East Coasters can only dream of. I've seen baggy pants, skinny stances, and a million other fads come and go. Yet there are still some things I'll never quite understand about the snowboard world. Today, we're gonna cover nine of them. Let's get it. But first, subscribe, hit notifications, and smash that like button. Okay, number one thing I don't understand about the snowboard world, particularly here on YouTube, is the obsession with stance. There are maybe more questions about what stance to use or what stance YouTubers ride than anything else. And if you're a complete beginner, I get it, but I think you're overcomplicating it. When in doubt, for width, just use the reference stance. That's the manufacturer's suggested stance, which is marked on the board visually. For angles, if you're a beginner, just go 12 in the front, negative 12 in the back to start. That way, if you figure out you're actually goofy instead of regular, you have no problem riding the board backwards. And then as you get used to it, go wider or more or less duck stance based on your preference once you get the hang of it. Set it where you like it and then you never need to change it again. I think I've been riding the same angle since 1997 and I only took my stance in a little bit after I started riding less part. Now the one exception to this is pow days. I move both feet the whole way to the back of the board and sometimes take one click out of duck stance on the back foot. And if you're wondering, I ride 18 in the front, negative 12 in the back, at 22 and a half inches wide, and I'm six foot one and 170 pounds. Number two thing I don't understand about the snowboard world is the obsession with gear. Just find one board that you love and ride it. Gear does matter, but not nearly as much as your skill level. That's gonna make the biggest difference on how much fun you have and how you perform on the mountain. I rode the Rome Mod for about 10 years and will probably ride this Rome Cruiser for the next 10 years. It rides POW, it rides park, broomers, trees, and everything in between. It is amazing. One of the best snowboards I've ever ridden and I have no desire to even look at another board. If you're obsessing over how many boards you can own or which board to ride for each day, you might be obsessing over the wrong thing. Work on your snowboard skills and you're gonna have a lot more fun out there. Number three thing I don't understand is telling pros or other people to wear helmets. Now I wear a helmet, I even suggest to my friends that they wear a helmet. But I don't preface every sentence out of my mouth with that phrase or tell strangers on the internet who snowboard for a living what they should or shouldn't do. A lot of people say, pretty cool, but where's your helmet in the comments? You know what I'm talking about. Did you know that helmets have not significantly reduced mortality from ski and snowboard accidents? I don't go around telling people not to ride motorcycles either, but it's only something I'll do in other countries that have a motorbike culture, not here in the States where every driver is texting, Snapchatting, and not looking where they're going. Ultimately though, we all need to determine our own risk threshold, and that is not the same for all of us. Some people think you shouldn't even step foot on a snowboard. Number four thing I don't understand is gatekeeping. Is the angry snowboarder actually a better snowboarder than Jonathan Buckhouse? I've never seen any proof that he is, so why is he so angry at Buckhouse? I know Buckhouse is not every Shredder's cup of tea, but he rode almost every ski resort in the US last season. I'm sorry, but that is badass. It's like getting mad that a horror movie isn't a comedy movie. Horror movies aren't made for comedy lovers. There's room for everybody in snowboarding, I really believe that. We need core and we need mass market and everything in between. I've got nothing but love for all the YouTubers. In case you didn't realize, it's a lot harder than it looks from the outside. Number five thing I don't understand is people who don't like POW. Okay, most of you probably agree with me on this one, but I have friends who don't like POW. How is this possible? I don't like the Colorado crowds on POW days, but if I could just ride POW with me and my friends and no lines, that's pretty much heaven on earth. I even like riding during the snowstorms as long as it's soft. It's one of the coolest things. If you're watching this and you don't like POW, chances are you just need to get a little better at it and you'll realize it's one of the coolest feelings you can experience as a human. Number six thing I don't understand is step-ins. Maybe it's because I've never tried them or maybe it's because I'm old school, but I simply do not want a stiffer boot or to have to trust Burton to keep me on the board in the air and not die. Strapping in isn't so hard and if step-ins were actually superior performance, then all the pros would ride them. That being said, if you're old or you have a bad back, 
I totally get that. Number seven thing I don't understand is reverse camber. And I know this one's gonna get me some haters along with everything else in this list, but I consider reverse camber to be the single worst thing that has ever happened to snowboarding. I got a reverse camber and I quit snowboarding for about 10 years because I thought I just didn't like snowboarding anymore. Then I got back on a camber and boom, I loved it again. Reverse camber snowboards suck and you can't convince me otherwise. They can't hold an edge, they can't put down a landing, they don't have any pop, and they're pretty much like riding down the hill on a saucer. You might as well go to the sledding hill. And to top it all off, they serve no point. I don't know if you know this, but regular boards float in the POW too, and you can actually land stuff on them. They also press, butter, and jib. There is no need for reverse camber. Number eight thing I don't understand is skiing. Seriously, in the early 2000s, I thought it was all over. Everyone cool would snowboard and our parents and grandparents would continue to ski and it would slowly die out. Why do people ski? It's like snowboarding, but half as cool. Any trick on skis looks cooler on a snowboard. Every single one. It's like asking what's cooler, surfing or water skiing. And the number nine thing I don't understand in the snowboard world is hate in general. And I know I'm hating in this video, but if any of you are into any of these things, I have nothing but love for you. And this video is just to get you fired up, okay? Life is hard enough as it is. The snow is something that brings us back to being kids again. It lets us forget about our problems for the day. We should all be supporting each other out there. And yes, I even mean skiers. So in conclusion, I take it all back. All that matters is that you get out there with your friends, you forget about your problems for a day, and you shred in your own way, whatever that is. Whether you're Team Buckhouse or Team Tommy Bennett, a park rat or a powder hound, an ice coaster, a weekend warrior, a reverse camber lover, or a two planker. We're all one big family. Let's not forget that. So go out there and get it. And don't forget, if you see the angry snowboarder, give him a hug to cheer him up. Nobody should be that angry about snowboarding. I think he might be hurting. All right, that's all for today. Let me know in the comments which one of these is going to turn you into a hater. Which one do you agree with? Let the battle begin. Peace out, Shredder.